Hi guys, just going to give you a bit of an insight into some of the stuff I get up to. These are um, my ERC20 investments in crypto. The tokens, they're not, um, they're not, because you're not allowed to say it's an investment, you're not allowed to say it's a share, etc. if you're actually selling this on. But what we're actually looking at here is actually just showing you that these are all tokens. And they all have different values. There's, there's over $12,000 in here at the minute. Now, one of the things is like this one here today, and this is why I was talking about diversifying. Um, the, we've got a market that's down at the moment. Oxy, which is the XYO uh, Oracle Network, has just uh, come in today. This is money that's been owed to me um, because during the trading, what happens is they have an ICO, and at the end of it, they'll actually give you your money. You know, at the end of the day, once you once you buy shares or whatever, but they're not called shares; they're called tokens for legal reasons. Um, but the point is, this is currently worth um, 0.2 of a pence uh, or a cent, a cent, sorry. So it's not even worth one cent yet. Um, I've got nearly a million of them, which makes it worth over a thousand dollars, nearly two thousand dollars. But at the same time it's not where it's going to be. Now some of these will fail, I know they will fail, um, but at the same time you're going to get some that will just fly. You know, at the end of the day, you, you imagine getting um, shares in Google when it was one cent and now it sits, I think, $1,200. Well, if you had a, <laughs> nearly a million of those, it's pretty obvious you would have done quite well out of it. So. What each one of these is, is actually a business entity. They're like owning shares, but you're not allowed to call them shares. XYO Network, this one, will go over here. This is their website. What they're actually utilizing is a beacon set up um, for the transfer of it, like a GPS system, but it's actually using beacons instead. Um, the reason being is it can't be corrupted or it's more difficult to corrupt. I would never say anything's impossible to corrupt simply because humans have had this habit of anything that's man-made, it can be undone by man. It's, it's just been the way of history. Um, but it's worth having a look at. I'm not telling you to invest in this. Or just so you can get an understanding of what I look at. This one, I do understand the value of the product. I understand what they're doing with it and I do recommend reading it yourself. But I'm just going to break down that this is an ICO, this uh, initial coin offering. I'm just putting some basic stuff out there. The roadmap is actually telling you why, where the business is going over a period of time. As you can see here, we're looking at it. We're already past this bit. This is the bit we're in at the moment. Mainnet launch, which means it actually goes live properly. Uh, XY will be rolling out its Gamma application, which enables various tools and functions for blockchain developers to begin generating smart contract code to interact with the real world. This is when that goes from 0.002 to maybe 0.01. And then if, you're, if we're lucky enough it gets something major, it shoots forward. As you can see, they're putting the API development on there, XY sticker based tracker, which can be added to e-commerce packages. So these are actually on the boxes. Could you imagine your Google, uh, sorry, Amazon. Now Amazon sends out all these boxes and you know as well as I do, and it's the same with eBay, the amount of stuff that goes missing is horrendous. Now, if you can actually prove that the item was there through the sticker system and it, the sticker interacts with beacons, so for example, in my street, there is a beacon there of some description somewhere. It recognizes that the driver's actually been to my house. So it's much harder to, for me to say, I never received it. But it also means the information can be updated to the end user as well. So for example, the truck's 15 minutes away and it's picking up on different beacons. So it can recognize, like for example, it's in traffic the difference between one beacon and the other. So it doesn't send a message until it hits the next beacon um, because it comes under 15 minutes because it's recognized it's slowing down as it hits traffic. That could then be activated to the computer system somewhere that somebody's delivery is due in the next 15, 20 minutes and as such it sends a text message and says your home delivery is due in the next hour, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Um, and that way you've got some 
trail of where the goods are. The same as when you get something a bit further afield, you could actually say, it's just got on a ferry boat, it's just got on a container ship, it's just got loaded onto a truck at a distribution center in Wales, whatever. You get a more accurate tracing of the information of what's going where, and the same as if it goes missing, you know exactly where that's occurred because they're all tracked. Um, so as you can see here, they're looking at expanding it out in 2019 as well. Satoshi XY and Vitalike XY Leo satellite sentinels. These are smaller satellites. Uh, will be sold next XY networks, low Earth orbit satellites. Take stakes represent ownership of the piece of the XY token reward. XY on board larger business organization. So you can see this is not an investment for 2018. It's an investment in in 2018, and selling will probably occur for me probably during 2019. And this is what I'm saying, although, <laughs> although um, I've got cash, it's cash I don't want to actually liquidate. Um, and then the other bits of the ICO, obviously you go through their media coverage as well. As you can see, there's still people buying as well. You've just seen that on the side. Amount of XY left at this price. Yeah, see, the, the ICO is still ongoing. And uh, now the team, it's something I always recommend. If you're, you're getting into this stuff, always review the team. When I tell people to look at their LinkedIn, I tell them to actually look at what people have done before. Because a lot of people have never had a job. And that already puts a red flag up for me. Because if there's no history that can confirm they've ever done anything, then why do I want to trust them with millions of pounds? The answer to that is, I don't. In the same way, if you've got a good team, and even if the project's a bit shaky, if they have a lot of history and experience, they can pivot onto something else. Because if you took into account something like uh, Android, Android was originally designed for cameras. It wasn't designed as the um, smartphone app that we have today. The, the, well, the, uh, what do you call it? It's the, the software that everything's built on. Well, blockchain technology is the Android. I suppose that's the most simplest way of putting it, but it's a, a lot more expansive. Um, that's why I go through different people and I see if there's a link between them somewhere else because if some people are validating each other as if working together in different companies and you find out that this guy owns a company she worked at and she owned a company that she worked at, you start to get alarm bells that it's completely fake. In this case, I went through it and it all seems above board, they have their experience, you can see the breakdown of information on here. I do recommend going through it with a fine comb because this is where people get scammed out of money. If you don't do your due diligence, this is where you get robbed. Um, and going through the team is fundamentally one of the places you'll pick that up most easiest. Because at the end of the day, somebody could write a white paper. Uh, for example, um, the guy, what's a white paper? We'll go into that now. White paper is basically a document explaining how it's gonna be used, what it's used for, and all the breakdown of the cost modeling, the structure, whatever it is. You know, at the end of the day, ICOs are completely different. So some could be on waste energy, some could be on a new computerized system, some could be uh, dealing with corruption, all different projects, but you need to go through the white paper and mark what doesn't look right and things that do, because then you start to get a balance. And the stuff that doesn't look right or is, else doesn't, does or doesn't look right, ask the team questions on it. See if they actually know what they're talking about. Do they have an explanation of this and that? Because you're looking for people that have actually prepared this and understand it and have a passion for it. Because they ain't got a passion for it. It's, it's just a project to make money. It's not a project that they're into. I may not deliver it, but at the same time, you've already given them the money. Um, here you go, there's the e-commerce, they're talking about medical care and hospitals, because obviously transporting um, could be lungs, hearts, whatever. Um, there's a lot of reasons you'd actually track this. And that's why I like this one, it does have a lot of world usage, but white papers, have a look yourself. You can have a look at this yourself. You just go xyo.network and you can go through these different bits to see if this is something you'd be interested in doing yourself. Um, the technology behind it, 
is another thing to look at. I mean, they have videos there, you can watch that. I'm not going to sit and explain everything and how it all works. But the whole point is, so reinforcement of accuracy and everything else. And like I said, they get these labels on the boxes and things. You can start tracking things because the, the beacons can engage with them. Um, so you have the ability to see where something is, where it was, etc. And like if something disappears, you can see it went to there and then suddenly veered off completely in another direction. So you've got more chance of recognizing where the failures were in your supply chain. Same as something that gets altered. Because that's quite a common thing as well. You know, at the end of the day, things do get tampered with and it's a big problem. Um, but I've put this video up there because a few people have asked me about the cryptos. And what you normally do with this sort of thing is if you are interested, you get in touch with the team, get all the information, go over the token. Uh, you then purchase the token. Tokens are normally purchased in, there you go, Ethereum in this case. So Ethereum is like a mainstream crypto. So you're looking at Ethereum, Ethereum for your purchase. Uh, so it means you have to buy Ethereum elsewhere, then buy your tokens with it, and then what they do is they send you the tokens and they end up in the wallet like I've got here, uh, where where my Ethereum sits. Um, so the point being is, it works quite well in the in the sense that the transactions are simple. You end up with a ledger, what we have here, and that's all the different transactions in there, how many tokens I've got, as you can see each one, how many I've got, as you can see there, I, I ditched that one, uh, I've ditched a few of them, this is where I sold off some of my money before the market dipped again, because <laughs> this is basically what paid for the Philippines trip. Um, my train accounts are different to this, because my train accounts are sat there, um, I'm just seeing the market starting to look in a better position, so I'm about to look at start trading again on top of everything else I'm currently doing. Um, but I just wanted to share that. And this is on Etherscan, but if you want a Ethereum wallet like this, you better go to My Ether Wallet, which is called Mew. Just look for Mew, My Ether Wallet and you'll, it'll set you up with a wallet where you can actually do these transactions and you can take your money and put it into there and you can use uh, this little guy up here which is MetaMask. MetaMask allows you to trade and stuff without the risk of actually leaving your wallet open because the you, private keys for example don't give to anybody that's yours that should not be accessible to anybody else um, but in this case what you've got is with MetaMask you can trade in and out without the risk of giving up too much information and at the same time you're logged into your wallet constantly um, but you need to start my ether wallet that's probably the easiest one uh, I could have a read of this email in a second um, but anyway guys there's a little bit of snippet of one of the things I do and um, what you should invest in entirely up to you I do not make those decisions for anybody I do do some videos sometimes showing people what's worth looking at but I do not give financial advice I'm not a financial advisor um, I do deal with assets from the sense that I do asset management but that's a completely different thing I'm actually valuing life cycles the cost of maintenance contracts stuff like that I'm not evaluating the true worth of a business and its potential outcome on something that's a completely new technology my stuff is predominantly on things like air conditioning, heating systems, da da da. So even for me, um, I analyze in the same way, don't get me wrong. I still go through the team, I still go through the project, can they deliver it, have the experience in it? Is there a viability? Who's going to use it? When's, when's it going to be complete? Because some projects are four years long. Um, also, what's the competition? There's many things I look at when analyzing this stuff. At the same time, I already accept that I only, may only get a 20% success rate. That may sound shock horror, but at the end of the day, the ones that fly will fly. At the same time, I can still liquidate and take a profit as and when anyway. I mean, Global Job Coin uh, last year was up at, my value of that last year was $8,000. Um, and a new mark, no, sorry, new mark was $8,000 and Global job coin is at eleven thousand. Now, 
I still got some of it, but you know what? The one thing I always do, ROI. So if you put a thousand dollars in and it's gone to eleven, take a thousand out. Sell a percentage of it, get your return on investment. You're increasing your spread. You're reducing your risk. But anyway guys, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful anyway. And if, it, if you are interested in this sort of stuff, I will do more videos on it. I'll just throw this one up there today because I'm actually about to start trading. Uh, oh, I'll stop.